The more serious kind of videos should be finished by now. It's my turn to deal with the lighter ones. First of all, because time is of the essence. So the next might be quite hasty and superficial, with sugar thrown in carelessly feverish inside and out. Please be more forgiving, friends. Xiaomi 14 struggled last year and didn't make it to 10,000. Didn't expect it to go out today. Be's the moment to hype it. I thought this guy just fixed his hunchback, but turns out the wall seemed to carry over the collarbones too. Compared to the configuration, the unexpected compactness made me, who was prepared to tactfully express the overwhelming form, suddenly confused. My mouth full of care from the contrast, not knowing where to start. The brilliance of this design lies in sharing the absolute size of Xiaomi 14 Pro with five segments equally. The weight is actually just an appetizer. Look closely, whether it's the straight metal body or the inward extension and curvature. Even the Kona leather in the middle finally without the plastic bracket, along with the exceptionally grand lens module, all lines are most strenuous, turning into visual attraction. Under comprehensive performance, aside from good moisture absorption and a rather comfortable grip, especially the black version, holding it gives off an inexplicably petite vibe, leading one into an illusion of entering the body of the device. I must say, the inward design seems naturally rugged on a visual level. Apart from gaming phones, always reminds me of the position marketed years ago that could drag cars around the streets. Wonder if you guys like this kind of armor-like feel? Then following this model's design, if it's not for selling accessories. Having a side-mounted dual-stage shutter like Sony's would probably make it complete. With regard to the camera module, although it still can stand upright on a desk, but nearly 6.5 meter Gucci, when combined with the accessories, amounts to a terrifying diameter of 60.76 meters. But anyway, when taken out, it's excessively large, no matter how you put it. Placed flat on the desk, it can even tilt to four degrees, so that it seems you don't need to bow down too much. It's a natural stand, belonging to, however, in terms of handling, speaking from my actual experience, interference is not as big as imagined. Vertical screen, the index finger helps hold the phone by propping up this epic protrusion, and horizontal screen can comfortably clasp and overpass the glass. However, of course, those with smaller hands must consider it more. This Everest level main device is no joke. Two minor supplements. One is that apart from Apple and Sony, the hardness of lens glass is actually rather extreme collectively, especially such large diameter lenses. It's somewhat nonsensical to only protect the trimmings. If you also don't want it to scratch within two and a half days, a full case might be a better choice. The second point, when the 42 split lens shakes, there will still be noise from the components, which is perfectly normal and should not be a concern. The appearance is easier to understand, whether it is the one-piece body frame, or the collaboration with Leica that frankly looks a bit like Nikon's Deco due to the golden trim, or even the Leica leather that feels like a camera grip. All combined, it is basically a camera design that takes the form of a phone to the extreme. It might be a bit selective, but those who enjoy photography will probably find it easier to appreciate. What do you guys think? Do you like the design of this Oppo Find X4? Feel free to leave a comment and interact. The fingerprint recognition position is the same as the Find X4 Pro, and it's fairly practical to use, just to interject about the port. Although it's updated for high-speed transfer theoretically reaching about 1GB, this might be limited by the power supply when connecting an external hard drive. Especially the 2280 specification, whether OTG is enabled or not, it doesn't seem to be always compatible. I've had complete failure with my tries, so if not necessary, choosing a large capacity flash drive is safer. The speaker sounds a bit better than the Find X4 Pro. Today for the high-end comparison, reference the iPhone 15 Pro Max and Samsung S24, as Apple's style is quite unique. To align as much as possible with the two Android competitors, we opened them all up for comparison. At the same time, Xiaomi enabled the immersive effect. Have a listen for yourselves. It's actually a bit confusing. Try to guess which one it is. In terms of imaging, the main camera is upgraded to a 1-inch Sony Radio 900, equipped with a 1.63 to 4.0 infinite aperture. Ultra-wide angle portraits and front view maintain a 2.5 1-inch M48 5E8, where the front view aperture has increased a bit. I think the most considerate change is that the long bridge end finally has fear. 75 meter has a minimum focusing distance of 10 cm, 120 meters 30 cm. You don't have to worry about shooting too vigorously. The camera moving back and forth is very comfortable. At the same time, they also integrated a neck and body fusion for you. What does that mean? Take the 75mm as an example. 
If you shoot super close up of cats, dogs, or food at 10 cm air, an aperture of 1.8 can easily cause the neck and body to be too shallow to capture the whole scene. This character can automatically recognize scenes, body fusion, once turned on, as seen in the picture, the aperture can be expanded up to f24 to obtain a clear and complete shooting effect. However, in extreme situations, it's not always possible to guess accurately, like this one. The clear range has expanded, but the pine needles originally in front of the snow now fall into a double depth state. Super digital negative. Referring to the iPhone 15 Pro Max, manually underexposed two stops, click and it's a photo. As you can see, the soft originals of both are quite dark, and many areas have almost gone to near black. At this time, import into Photoshop. We pull it back from the original spot. Although it's uncertain if Xiaomi's product truly has 16-bit, but anyway, the recovered effect seems indeed better. Super animal cross-segment color consistency. Friends just feel it simply. I don't know if you think it's okay. For the 30x Super Zoom as an example, although AI can indeed supplement details to a certain extent, making the image look clearer, improving the usability of high magnification digital zoom, but I personally feel that the overall level of involvement is not very high as of now. Additionally, it might turn parts that were not clearly photographed into strange shapes. Next, the usual central standard is yet another high-end match. Continue referring to Samsung S24 LTR and iPhone 15 Pro Max. Default mode, lift the phone to shoot. That's right, do you think just by opening the camera, you could casually experience a baptism of true layers? In fact, when there is no glamorous setting, delicate lighting or profound photography skills, especially facing overcast light with infinite focus, it's not immediately apparent what the significant differences are. If you cover up the watermark, Samsung's brightly lit image is more likely to be favored by the general public. Of course, by enlarging and watching closely, some clues can still be found. Thanks to the lens and algorithm characteristics, Xiaomi's viewing experience is indeed relatively smooth and three-dimensional without excessive sharpening, rather than Samsung's or Apple's distant view, which seemingly wants to be more paper-thin than the foreground. As for the color temperature, there's no need to fret too much, and here the reason is largely due to the cold professionalism of the two beside it. Now, do you still think it's yellow? As the setting contracts, the cinematic flavor touted in propaganda begins to emerge more, almost any time, you can find a cautious transition in the image. Furthermore, the soft and accurate colors even vaguely add a touch of glossiness, although it may not suit everyone, but it cannot be denied that it is relatively pleasing to the eye. Then at the telephoto end, it belongs to having gone too far, but using the 75mm lens to produce images, the results are commendable. Almost every shot is full of layers and texture. 120mm and even 240mm are also the same, especially this picture. By comparison, it even gives me a bit of an urge to print it out. The feet appear very close to other lenses. Perhaps this is a manifestation of consistent consistency. There's also somewhat bold, also adopted a low sharpening strategy to avoid a plasticky feel. What do you all think of this effect? The scenes today are indeed more extreme one after another. At night under weak light with widespread gray and white, even if the light itself is a bit yellow, Xiaomi seems to be too warm, almost completely obscuring the whiteness of the snow. At this time, I personally prefer Apple, even though there may be a certain lewd situation. As for Samsung, I don't know why, but it's always a bit... And similarly, with the reduction in the scene, the segment cuts focus, some perceptual advantages will gradually become apparent. Of course, if judging a part of the time harshly, actually manually decreasing exposure, the difference won't be as big as you'd imagine. I won't say anything else. Friends, just take a simple look at which color you like. For video recording, continue to refer to iPhone, uniform 4K 60fps specs, raise hand and record. I feel that normally speaking, the 42 series to some extent continues the photography style. Like this segment, for example, Apple is relatively flat, but Xiaomi has maintained the excess. However, this is not absolute. By daylight, Xiaomi is also quite sharp. The next few small clips, everyone feel free to pause and feel. k 120 frames this is not surprising no need to say more just need to be aware that the advertised five times slow motion is down to 24 frames 
After all, even our small stall started at 60 FPS eight years ago. Unless you want that choppy feel, otherwise streaming at 24 FPS is inevitably too punctuated, suggest using at most a four times slowdown in practice or performing post-production frame interpolation. As for the master starting the shoot, it's easier to understand. I don't know if you guys still remember Sony's S simple before. These two things seem to be pretty much the same. Both pursue neutrality, accuracy, and high dynamics, basically equivalent to the log mode that has been well adjusted in primary color grading. Uh, for example, if you want to maximize dynamic range, then shooting raw log footage is definitely not usable. You have to at least restore the colors first. The master shot is to achieve this depth. While retaining plenty of post-processing room, you just need to drop the brightness and adjust the saturation. Going back to the 14th brush. Now the left side is a straight out. The right side is master shot. We don't touch anything else. Just randomly adjusting the brightness should reveal the difference. The effects of the master shot are generally far better than straight out of the camera. For example, this scene, the phone still adjusts the brightness. Pay attention to the overall feel of the picture. In fact, it is already very usable at this point, and it has a professional quality. What if on this basis we apply a Luti, how would it turn out? Doesn't it vaguely have the flavor of an internet blockbuster? You can't achieve this level with straight out of the camera. Finally, to add a small point, it might not be what you'd expect. That is what the official said about full range 4K 60fps zoom. Means within the range from ultra wide angle to 50x zoom, you can record 4K 60fps. Not that you can zoom wildly while recording. The picture will still change when switching cameras. Simply understanding the screen part 6.73 inches, 2K resolution, CSOCA, blah, blah, blah. Hardware specs seem to be just like the Xiaomi 14 Pro's area, but after all, this is Aoshua. Is it really exactly the same in practice? The visual light perception is indeed very close, but this angle doesn't seem to show any significant difference. Kang Huiji personally thinks it is within an acceptable range. After all, Samsung is here. All other phones suddenly seem quite good. In terms of brightness, manual average maximum brightness is 521.1 nits, trigger 1074.6% window HS brightness to exceed 3000, up to 3100 nits. Manual average adds another 207, which is nearly 800 nits. How to say it overall is a bit brighter than the 14 Pro on hand? Too much is that the uniformity level is off the charts. Very outrageous. Even surpassed the iPhone 15 Pro Max. If you say it's out, I don't believe the screen hasn't been tuned much. After all, even the default mode's blue light performance seems stronger than before. Is everything just a coincidence? It can't help but provoke one to ponder. The sky flickers at a low brightness of 1920 Hz. High brightness internal land suction switch location is roughly in control center. Brightness slider is around 55%. This UM low brightness is similar to 14 Pro, but when it's high brightness, the display effect is obviously better. The default mode is when it's most accurate. Actual test white point is close to CI 2015 standard 2 degrees. But if you don't like this, then choose the natural mode in the advanced settings. Touch sampling is a bit mysterious. System UI is priced at 100 lux. The basic average is about 200 to 210 hertz. Perhaps because of this, although there are no significant issues with the guarding, but the sampling sometimes seems to have a tendency of being fast and slow. 25 degrees Celsius half an hour 3D mark machine baking. As a non-gaming phone, especially the main camera, hates to take up 50% of the body with plastic deepening. Ah uh, no, with Kana's skin deepening image flagship Xiaomi SS Okaya actually finished. Truly unexpected, this device even peaked at 13.2 watts. The average is also 8.8 .8 watts. During the prime period, stability in this section was generally maintained around 50 to 55%, but surpassed the 70% threshold of Photogate on the 14. The CPU is roughly 80 degrees Celsius. The GBO is 90 degrees Celsius. Overall performance can be said to be much stronger than I imagined. 30 degrees Celsius extreme quality king's glory. It might be a bug penalty. Even according to Xiaomi's consistent style for this generation, the performance release is still about an extra 0.5 watts. The excess heat generated by the output is on. In an environment temperature that is not low, it leads to the overall final result, including the gradual decline at the tail end, is very similar to the previous 14 Pros. However, size does not need to be worried about, because even so, the internal average temperature is not high, even could be said to be a bit low. It seems that the new cooling pump's heat dissipation efficiency is not to be underestimated. Just, especially in higher ambient temperatures like 3 degrees Celsius, the heat exported on the Geisen surface may be a bit difficult to dissipate. Looking up, Genshin's 5.45 watts average power consumption is no problem. Genuine rate trend-wise is also fine. But although the average genuine rate reached 53.8 with some significant variations, but since it was almost always around 40 to 60 frames during the process, the dense fluctuations make the actual sensation. The time can't exactly be called smooth. When playing, setting the lock to four main pins directly or lowering the quality might be a better choice. The temperature aspect is similar to the steel scenario. It's very low inside, but slightly higher on the external railway of interest. Overall, it's still almost identical to the Xiaomi Mi 14 Pro in every aspect. Also very smooth for the first 12 minutes. Then it gradually drops to around 32 to 33 frames. However, if we delve into details, the frame rate and temperature will be slightly better. For such an image flagship, I think it's good enough anyway. In terms of charging, 90W fast charge, peak power 71.7 watts, average 33.3, charging from 1% battery, 10 minutes to charge to 34% and 30 minutes to 88% until 100%, taking 41 minutes to fully charge, 43 minutes for actual capacity shutdown. Messy oil painting.
Not only does the full charge coincide with the total charging time, but the advertised capacity is 5300, fully charged is also 5300. It seems Xiaomi is very confident in the lifespan of this new battery. Okay, that's it. How do you feel right now? Does this meet your expectation? Looking at the overall, even if we exclude the exceptionally high photography standards, there seems to be no substantial shortcomings. The 42 brush is worthy of the name of a mainstay product, but it's not suitable for everyone. Even if you can accept the dominantly aggressive main color module and like the design that looked like a camera from inside out from top to bottom. In fact, it is necessary to reconsider from a rational perspective whether we can actually utilize the so-called excessive imaging capability and whether we can manage the taste of the so-called real grading. If he wants me to use it, I feel like it's a bit of a waste. Nothing else matters. And with an ample budget, and you want to experience an advanced feel that doesn't seem like a phone could capture, then it's definitely worth a shot. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you for watching.